<laughs> it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. I feel like we're a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. My name's Simon. I'm a doctor and activist. Hi, my name's Emil and I'm a cannabis activist. My name is Alvin and I'm a cannabis activist. Um, I'm Anku and I'm also a cannabis activist. I'm Ed, I write for a cannabis magazine about the laws and politics of cannabis. I'm Chiozo, I'm a musician. The, the main issue that every cannabis smoker has to deal with on a daily issue is being a criminal for the only reason of smoking pot. And I mean, that, that's going to play on your mind every time you go and score. A lot of the time when you're smoking with your mates, who you can trust, and um, everyone has to deal with that. If you get caught, then you have to deal with the stigmatization of having a criminal record for it, which can marginalize you. So that on is the most, at the most fundamental level affects every cannabis smoker. If they keep it illegal, they create a very dangerous situation for lots of people, mm -hmm. and also they create a nation of criminals. Yeah. I mean, every time you you light up, you order you order fucking criminal. If you want to research the negative sides of weed, I, I heard it's very easy to get a grant for that. But if you want to research anything positive, it's very difficult. I hear. Can the government give us reasons for it being illegal? Yeah. That's my. I want to know. I want to know why. If something's prohibited, I want to know why. Okay, you can't push it on us and say why should we legalize this or why? Why is it illegal? How come? After literally thousands of years of people growing it for medicinal use, why can't I grow it now? I mean, who are they to tell me what I'm allowed to grow in my own garden? Other people consuming it as a drug, they consume it very strictly in a medicinal sense. So you can see how highly regarded this plant really is to people. The governments think that they know what's best for you, right? Well, what's best for your for for your health? You know, it's it's only a, a recent thing where people are starting to to treat themselves. Let's call it paternalism, where the government really feels that they need to protect you. I wrote they should leave us to make our own choices, as people have done for many years. Well, they're actually under obligation to stay away from telling yeah. you what you can do with your own mind and body. Yeah, so, I mean, you should be able to control your own body's chemistry. Yeah. Well, be I, drinking. I'm experiment myself. Yeah. I should be allowed to experiment myself. But I, I am allowed to experiment, experiment, I mean, experiment it, 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 myself. Maybe the government is not really that um, that much against legalizing it. You know, it's just that it's like who do they want to have on board? Like we, we're kind of like working from the assumption that they're the enemy, and I know that it's not the government that's the enemy. It really is business because big business that makes all the decisions. So I mean, when business is ready to make that move you know, government is going to play to the tune, you know what I'm saying? They're going to dance to the tune. So it's more like I'm thinking, how are we ready to kind of like be the other side of business? Because we're the, we're the buyers, like how we're the voters. So we can strike if we get together. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, who are they? If we're the consumers and we build, we build growth because of consumers, what if we say we don't want to consume? So we can strike business anytime, anywhere. They know that, you know? So it's a question of who's going to outwit who? Who's going to move faster? Because this thing will be legal, but who's going to control it? That's the thing. Who who's going to control it? Exactly. And what do different people want exactly. from legalization? Yeah. At the street level, a lot of people want the freedom to smoke. At yeah. the corporate level, they want a lot of freedom to get into the market, yeah. dominate the market. The government usually cites a 1960 study that was done, and the study is actually not not true. The study wasn't done according to research laws according to how research is done in the medical field um, and that's the whole study that has messed up everything up until now. There's a lot of cannabis studies and there's even more studies on cannabinoid studies, almost four or five times more studies on cannabinoids um, than actual cannabis and the science is just getting deeper into those layers. Curing as well as treating so many diseases, cancer is a big one to start with, epilepsy, there's just been a case reported in America where a kid, young kid who had epilepsy had fits every day of his life, did a lot of pharmaceutical pills to combat it. Um, his father was at the end of his tether and tried cannabis. And I think this is like an eight, nine-year-old kid 
and under cannab cannabis treatment, he went his first day of his life without an epileptic fit. There were a couple of patients of mine that could have ADD and uh, they uh, attention deficit disorder mm -hmm. or hyperactivity in children and uh, with with cookies just using cookies and and he actually knows when when a spell's coming on that he can he can regulate himself with a cookie. There's videos online if you if you go look for ADHD and epileptic fits and there's kids that have fits every day and they their moms resorted ended up resorting to medical cannabis as a as a means and I mean kids that are totally like were totally full of fits uh, uncontrollable yeah beforehand before doing cannabis and now there's CBD t tinctures which is completely non toxic doesn't have any THC doesn't get you high and that's a whole other level of medicine for for pain relief analgesic it's, it's anti inflammatory it's uh, there's a lot of properties on CBD which which is only now being explored, and um, it's all a, it's all used to be about the THC and the high. We've been told that it's going to end up in uh, you're going to end up with a needle hanging out of your neck. Uh, you know you're going to lose everything. We're going to end up on the when in fact way. it's actually good for you. South Africa traditionally smoking is the easiest way, it's the most convenient way because you just rolled up, and even though some people rolling up a newspaper. So um, it's the most convenient way, and um, ideally, it's not always the best way. No, you don't have to smoke it. I mean, always people are worried about smoking it, but you don't have to smoke it. There's there's so many ways you can prepare it. Uh, you can absorb it through your skin in a in a in a cream or topical preparation. Uh, you can vaporize it. So I mean, smoking's a it's no longer really an issue anymore, I don't think. Uh, also, when you eat it, you get more medical value out of it than when you smoke it. Now, the best way to describe it, if you've never actually smoked a joint, is a 10-kilometer jog that feels really, really flippin' good afterwards. Be being high is when your mind's stimulated and your body's relaxed. Oh, yeah, After sex, man. that's about the same. Well, I consume it for mostly, you know, creative thoughts, um, abstract thought is really, it's brilliant. Your sexual receptors are similar to your cannabinoids, your, your, your endocannabinoid system. It's, it's a mirror. It's almost the same as endocannabinoid. Your sexual, your, sexual, your sexual organs mirrors the endocannabinoid system in terms of experience. And if you're going to be high while you're having sex, it's going to be enhanced. It's just how it is. Yeah, it's great. If one of you is and one of you isn't, it can be a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's, it's part of the foreplay a lot of the time, or part of the afterplay. Cannabis is part of the osmosis of life and love. If you have problems in your relationship and you both smoke, even one of you smoke, those problems are going to come to light very, very quickly. But I promise you, if you're going to sort out those problems, you're going to have the best sex ever in your life. <laughs> sort out those problems and uh, get, get over the hurdles. Whatever's itching you, sort out the itch and get over it. This is interesting that, you, that you're talking about using using a, a drug to, to actually solve a problem rather than like, usually when people talk about drugs it's with, you know, in avoiding problems, that you're taking a drug to avoid a problem. Escapism. Escapism. Many people would say alcohol gives you personality. Um, I don't want a other personality, I just want to be myself. <laughs> and when I smoke we, uh, I don't get an other personality. I, my personality just get amplified. I become more of who I really am. I, I've been smoking on a daily basis for over 20 years. So to me, it's very much a way of life. I, I went to university after 16, 17 years of smoking every day. I smoked every day through that. Fine, no problem. I, it's a, I, I love it. There's no guilt in what you do. Yeah. Like once it's, once it's an integral part of your lifestyle and you know you're doing is the truth and you know it's, it's, it's good for you and the way you use it is good for you. For me it's food for my, for my soul so it's like it's food for my conscience, you know. It brings my conscience out, I remember certain things. You know, sometimes when, I, when I'm not high it's like I'm not really under the guidance so I can do things in a rash way or whatever and then when I smoke I remember, I say, oh, and I'm, oh. then I phone up my friend and say, oh, I shouldn't have said that to you, blah, 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 blah. It's real good. It, rem it put me in touch with my creator and his laws and his love. <laughs> the love of God, you know? <laughs> How many people have dependencies on alcohol? I mean, fuck, I don't know, yeah. a few. Like, yeah. quite, like quite a few. Even Everyone who's ever been a bartender 
knows that the Western Cape has an enormous alcohol problem and that the social impact of that is far greater than cannabis. You know, you're not going to go into, into cold turkey withdrawals if you don't smoke weed. So there's no compulsion, I don't believe. It's a, it's a passion. People have a passion about it. It's ganja, you're free. If you're not motivated on cannabis, then you're a lazy person. It's that simple. But I must say, no, nobody, uh, nobody has ever taken a shot of tequila and said they're going to go sweep the floor. Yeah. Oh, hi, this guy People was are lazy. Are you crazy? It's, oh, it's, it's man. The issue as well now is sometimes you can buy some weed and it's just going to knock you out. You don't know what you've bought, you smoke it. I've got some in my pocket now. It's based on a persona. This whole lazy stoner, you smoke weed, you get lazy, all that shit. It, it's based on a character, it's not based on fact. Cannabis is a, is a way to alleviate stress out of one's life in any way, in any form, whether it's textile, industrial, biofuel, medicinal, therapeutic, or create, creative, it doesn't matter. It alleviates stress of your life. And if you alleviate stress of your life, you are going to live better. Ganja makes me forget quite a number of things, you know, but, you know, I forgive it. It's all right. It's because I love the ganja. I forgive it for that. But I think for me, actually, I think so. Because with me, man, I forget so many things. You know what I'm saying? You know, people forget shit all the time anyway. People just forget things. You know, if you follow a group of people, you'll f probably find that they're absent-minded just as much as people who smoke weed. And it's great as it's a just smoker a, when you yeah. hang out with absent-minded people or normal people who don't smoke because you see that they forget things as well. Yeah, yeah. You go, at least I have an excuse. <laughs> Is it really forgetting? Isn't your mind maybe just occupied with a little I'm bit higher thoughts? Somebody said, I'm, I'm not present. I said, no, I'm present, just not here, you know. I'm fully present somewhere else, just not here. It's just that you guys just get a bit of the body, but I'm somewhere else, and wherever I am, I've got my shit in place, man. I'm doing my stuff, you know what I'm saying? But it's like it's a different world. I'm in this world, but it's like, then I have to make a choice. Who's wrong, who's right? And when I do the calculation, I say, no, oh, man, for the weed, forget it, man. You know what I'm saying? I did feel as if I should give up a couple of years ago, um, and I did for about four months. I didn't feel any better, any different. I was bored a lot more of the time mm. and found it difficult to alleviate my boredom. You can, if you're bored, you can sit down and have a smoke and before you know it, an hour's gone by and you, you know, your mind's been off thinking about whatever it's been thinking about. Relevant issues in your life, immediate issues. And just thinking of yourself straight, listening to some music. It's very inspirational. Um, very unlikely just to sit there staring into space after a joint. If you've got nothing to do, you'll go out and find something to do. It brings down a situational argument and you could actually facilitate and talk about it and discuss things because it, it brings the anger down. There's no violence mm -hmm. beyond cannab cannabis if, if consumed in appropriate manners in appropriate situations and sets and setting. There's no violence associated with that. If they did decriminalise it, you know, they'd but, I mean, that would be a health and safety thing, though. Yeah. Well, yeah, there's responsible I mean, use, though, mm -hmm. and that, that responsible use extends even to uh, over 18 years. I mean, at least it's a non-toxic plant, so, I mean, if you're worried about your teenager going out, you know, at least they're not going to kill themselves doing it. There's no way to measure how, how, how high you are compared to actually how much, how, how much THC you have in your body. Um, and if you smoked two weeks ago, uh, those cannabinoids in your body could actually be more than somebody that actually smoked yesterday. So there's no way to actually, actually ac accurately measure that. And the government, that's, that scares them. If I'm stoned and I'm driving through a city, I'm a lot more chilled out. I'm not so aggressive. I'm quite happy to sit there at the red light and <laughs> have a look around, see who else is sitting around and you know, listen to the music. If, I, if I'm not stoned and I want to get somewhere, I'll be, I'll be pissed off that I'm sat in the traffic. My dream is that uh, all the whalers come together and lick the chalice together with all the Rastafari and we all go to one big Naya Binky session and we beat the drum and praise up his imperial majesty and pray Eli Selassie, Ja Rastafari and we lick the pipe and the whole place just full up of smoke. Well, my dream for cannabis is that they, that they decriminalize it internationally. My dream is cannabis liberation because it will liberate a lot of people. My dream is being able to grow medicine in my back garden. My dream is just that people learn the truth about everything, not just cannabis, but there's a lot of truth about many other things that they also need to learn. Well, my dream for cannabis is that society 
and that everyone in it finds a way to integrate cannabis in all its forms. So as, a, as an industrial plant, for, uh, as a food source, as a, a medicinal source, as a drug to get high. 